It's Fleet Week here in New York City, which gives us the chance to personally thank three of the thousands of visiting sailors, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen for their service. Joining us are Petty Officer James Burke of the Navy, Lieutenant Junior Grade Anna Ruth of the Coast Guard, and Staff Sergeant Matthew Santiago of the United States Marine Corps. Thanks for coming in. And now we're off to a former Navy facility not far from here where there is yard work going on, as Jim Axelrod will explain. It's a familiar sight across America, a once booming industrial center now mired in decay. The Brooklyn Navy Yard knows the story well. Brooklyn Navy Yard has the glory and the glamour of the past. The question today is, is there a future? Nothing boomed louder in the first half of the 20th century. It's bustling docks with a backdrop for the opening of On the Town. New York, New York, New York, New York, New York. Established in 1801, the yard churned out fleets of military ships over the next 150 years providing 70,000 jobs during World War II. But when the war ended, business dried up. Within a few decades, the Brooklyn Navy Yard had taken its place among the rusting and rotting until it finally closed in 1966. These are smaller offices for six or eight people. Uh, we have conference rooms up there. David Belt had a different ending in mind. He's one of the developers of New Lab, an 84,000 square foot hub for high tech startups housed in what used to be the grease and grime of a heavy machine shop. People saw this as just like a rusted out shell. When I came into this building, you know, it just was mind blowing. You I mean, saw it immediately? Immediately. New Lab is a $35 million project. 80 companies and 400 people work here. We want to make sure that they have a level of optimism and humanism in the work that they're doing so that they're making the world better. Venture capitalists have poured $250 million into it. There is a lot going on. Take vertical farming, for instance, a business that grows plants and produce without any soil. You won't believe this, an earpiece that translates 30 foreign languages in real time. And then there's solar panel backpacks that charge cell phones as you walk. As soon as you go to lift something, you'd put this on. That's what's going to be doing most of the heavy lifting. Exactly. Sean Pedersen's company, Strong Arm Technologies, makes support braces that also track the movement of manual laborers to prevent injuries. We're creating a better future for the industrial athlete. The industrial athlete. Mm -hmm. What's an industrial athlete? The guy that'll deliver the packages to your door, that'll pave your roads, that'll build the buildings that we're in. He sold 5,000 vests last year, expects to sell 12,000 this year, and is doing business with 20 of the 100 largest employers in the country. So this is our latest product. It's called the Ali Chair. <laughs> That's so cool. Jessica Banks designs chairs for Space Challenge city dwellings. An MIT grad, she thrives on the energy here. When you have a network and a community of people that you can actually work with, that gets you ahead. Commitment in the camp. All the millennial churn even works for Steve Gorovan, an old school inventor whose company makes devices that help Mars rovers pick up and analyze soil samples. I don't think there's anyone who works in any one of these companies who's 62 like I am. Do you like? Being the senior statesman? Nope. <laughs> Not one bit. <laughs> Not at all. Actually, he loves it. Oh, it's a major shot in the arm for my, for my business. The new lab companies are valued at nearly a billion dollars. Not a bad turnaround for this once abandoned site. Brooklyn Navy Yard, where an entirely new generation is coming to do good and do well.